Hey my friend, welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be covering my three favorite mastering tools, my three favorite mastering plugins that I use pretty much every single day as a full-time mix and mastering engineer. Make sure you stay until the end because at the end of the video I'm going to give you a free resource that is going to help you take your mixes to the next level. We're about to get into some mastering and I can't wait to show you guys my three favorite tools. Let's dive in. All right, so here we are. We got a track by an awesome artist called Jews. Uh, I mixed this a little while ago and it's out now. It's called Superheroes. But let's have a listen with no plugins. This is just the mix completely unmastered, okay? Is it for real that we have met for ages? Not long ago, we would just fool around. Okay, it sounds like that. And then we got a big drop here in the chorus. It sounds like this. All right, so let's let's apply some of these mastering plugins and show you my three favorites. Okay, so let's start with number one. Number one is FabFilter Pro L2. Now, in this video, I'm not building out a mastering chain here. I'm just showing you these three individual tools and using them on their own. So don't put these in this order. Just focus on one tool at a time, and I'm going to show you what each of them does and ways that you can use it. Lots of these are going to be focused on loudness and a couple other things, but this in particular is an amazing, amazing limiter. I use this all the time and I'll show you how I set it up. So typically what I'll do is this will go on my master, usually towards the end of my mastering chain. First, I'll do some EQ and stuff like that. And then I'll grab this Pro, uh, FabFilter Pro L2. And there's some amazing presets in here of different styles, but I'll head in here and for this type of genre, there's there's actually genre presets. We have like hip hop, hard rock and metal. And what I'll do is sometimes just grab something like for this EDM punchy will be perfect. And then I'll just tweak uh, some of these settings here. Like I know as a fact, I don't want to link the transients. Uh, so I'm gonna go on 0% and that's channel linking from the left and right. So it'll, it'll use the limiting on the left and right at the same time. And uh, that can sound really cool for certain styles. It'll sound a little bit more like the 90s or kind of like an L1 uh, waves limiter type of sound. I like to get a really open sounding master, really stereo. So I don't often link the transients. And to get this plugin to perform better, you are gonna want to uh, oh, use the oversampling. I'll usually go on something, let me bring this up so you guys can see it better. I'll usually go on something like uh, 16 if the CPU can handle it. And then all you're gonna do is drive up the gain and also you don't want it to clip. So you're gonna have to set an output. I'm gonna go uh, minus 0 0.1, okay? So, and then we're gonna drive into the plugin and have a listen to what this limiter does. <laughs> Very, very often I'll turn off this true peak limiting. I just don't like how it sounds that much. Uh, so a lot of the time I'll turn that off and I'll always listen back and forth as well to hear what I'm taking out. Okay, so when you do that, you just wanna check that you're not digging too deep into, into the song. And this plugin's also really cool because it can do a one-to-one -one reference, uh, a volume reference between just how the mix, how, how squished your mix is sounding because you don't wanna completely destroy all the dynamics. And what's really cool about dynamics in this plugin is you can really finesse the attack and the release the way you like. So if you want something punchy, you can go with a slower attack and the, the release will determine how much this limiter is pumping. Honestly, nine times out of 10, settings kind of like this, kind of medium attack and a little bit of a faster release sound great to me. So let's go with these types of settings. <laughs> So I can bypass it here, or I can do a one-to-one -one bypass, which sounds like this. I actually really like how this punchy style works. These are just different uh, styles of limiters. It's not like super, super different how they sound, um, 
But a lot of the times, what I will do with this Fab Filter Pro L2 while we're here, I'm going to show you a really cool trick, is I will put a I will put two instances of this plugin, and the first one I will set on transparent. Okay, so I'll have two instances at the end of my master chain that look just like this. And the first one, I'll, I'll leave the True Peaks off. Sometimes on the second one, I will turn it on, um, just depending how things are sounding. But I will drive that first plugin just until, let's go back to the first plugin. I'll drive it just until it's grabbing the very tips, okay? <music> All right, you see that? We're not squishing the song too much, but we are starting to limit. And then I'll put a second limiter on, and this is a great trick for getting loudness. And now you drive it a little bit more. <laughs> Okay, so that's a great trick with uh, FabFilter Pro L2. I use this limiter a ton to get my music loud and still have it really dynamic sounding. Uh, you know, 99 out of 100 times, this is the very last thing, just cleaning up and polishing out all my transients at the very, very, very end of the chain. Okay, so that is the first mastering plugin that I absolutely love that I had to share with you today. Okay, next up is... Slate Digital Virtual, I think it's called Virtual Mastering Console. I use this thing all the time. It'll usually be uh, about three quarters of the way down my mastering chain. And this is awesome because you can add volume, but you also can control transients. You can do a little bit of like a, like a bus compressor style type of thing first. And this plugin is just, wow, it just sounds so good. So I'm gonna reset it, uh, default it back. I took off those limiters from before and we're just gonna have a listen to what this plugin sounds like and kind of working through it one little section at a time, okay? So I'm gonna stay on this, uh, this really punchy chorus here, this song, because that's a good spot to demonstrate this plugin. So first off, it is is this first module here, which is a compressor. Now, with in mastering, you don't wanna like crush your mix or anything like that. I like to just kind of ride the top of the mix and it just really smooths, it, smooths out the mix and gets it sounding uh, really consistent and nice. And this compressor is great for that. So I'll usually head up with a ratio around two in this area. So obviously that's too much on the threshold. And I'll let it ride here right around, you know, zero, uh, minus 0 0.5. Honestly, it just skims the top of the mix when, when I do this. Usually I have things com com pretty compressed already in the mix. So I don't compress my masters too crazy, um, just, just with bus compression. And then the attack and release I find usually sounds really great kind of in this, uh, in the faster area on this guy. All right, so I just want to ride the top of the mix like that. And then I want to head into uh, this this level where I this leveling uh, section of the plugin where I can control transients, can add some gain, can add dynamic perception. This section this knob right here if anything else in this plugin just this knob is like the most amazing thing to me because let's without me adjusting anything else let's just listen how this sounds do you hear that little difference and just in the dynamics uh, you know, and I, when I say li little difference, I mean big difference in the grand context of the whole mix. It's just, it's, it's, it has this, it applies this awesome algorithm that just brings out the dynamics of the song um, in a really cool way. So I love using this. And th you can control intersample peaks here. I find most of the time, unless I want kind of a, a really warm and creamy sounding master, that if I can lean that a little bit towards hard, it just gets it uh, sounding really modern and those transients come out really nicely. So I'll do that there and then transients here, you can add low punch and detail. Let me show you actually how this sounds first. Thing. So 
So smooth is more subtle. And hard is more crispy on those peaks. But it can, if you drive it too much here into the hard side, you're gonna get distortion and just, you just be subtle. So I like to lean it this way a little bit. And low punch is gonna bring out that thump in the bottom. Do you hear that like, it's like a, like a kind of heartbeat type of sound. But unless, you, like, like usually you'll have balanced some of these things in your mix already to get that punchy low end that you're hearing that we already have. So I'm not going to need to add too much. And then with the detail, I do like to drive up the detail a little bit. Obviously, way up here at 10 is a little too crispy, a little too sizzly in the highs. But this can really bring out that nice uh, radio sparkle in the mix if you just add a little bit of detail to the trans. <laughs> All right, and I just added some gain to this so you guys can hear everything that's happening better. You can, when you're adding gain here, you're basically just turning everything up in, in this plugin uh, just so you can see where your metering is in this last section. So sometimes I will just leave this gain entirely off and I'll do all my gain stuff after with uh, just a limiter. But this console right here, this all sounds amazing. I love this. I use this pretty much every single day when I master music. So that is a great tool. Now let's move on to the third and final tool. This is from Sonux Oxford Inflator, uh, Oxford plugins. This inflator uh, effect is just, wow. Uh, I, I got the free trial of this a little while ago and I absolutely loved it. And I knew I had to get my hands on this plugin and just add it to my arsenal. So let me show you how it works. If you've never seen it before, it looks, it's, it's different than a limiter. It's, it adds meat, it adds harmonics and meat, and it does it in a really unique way that no other limiter plugin or you know saturation plugin has ever really done. And that's why this plugin in particular is so popular. So let's have a look at how this works. And if you've never seen it before, it's a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna explain that to you now. Here's how you're gonna wanna set this up. When you open up the plugin, you, it's, it's gonna be on factory default and it's gonna have this uh, clip protection, okay? But what you wanna do is actually turn that off so that you can drive up the input into the plugin and see when it starts clipping. Then you can back it off. I believe if you have this on, uh, it's not gonna show you that clipping <laughs> and you need, you need to see where it is. So turn that off to start. And you'll hear I'm turning it up now until we're hitting this zero point here. So it's too loud. And when you do this, of course, you're gonna wanna go to the loudest section of your mix uh, and test this in a few different spots in your song so that you make sure you're not, you're not clipping things, okay? Let's say for, for this song, let's say that this input is safe up until this point, okay? Now, the way this works is we're gonna wanna set an output so we don't, uh, we don't clip the mix, okay? Just to be safe in this, in this example, I'm gonna go minus one. And here's where the magic happens in this plugin, the effect percentage, okay? So you have to make sure we put effect in, and all we do it to, add, to inflate the mix, it's gonna add uh, dynamic, it's gonna add punchiness, it's gonna add, uh, you know, this, this beautiful harmonic sonic character. And that's just all in this effect, okay? And we can turn that, we can drive it all the way up anywhere from zero to 100. Um, in, in some cases, I've turned it all the way up to 100 and that sounded great. Uh, but I found recently, just with the way that I do my mastering chains and I may even uh, add a, li a limiter after this, like in some cases, uh, I'm not gonna wanna do that because I'm just gonna end up distorting my mix. So I'm just gonna drive in the effect up until I really feel the mix coming to life. You'll. That's the best way I can, I can describe this plugin, just the mix coming to life. So you're gonna hear that now, and let's do this example. Do you hear that when I turn it down, how it, the mix kind of just dulls out?
So honestly, right around, obviously once we got to 100, it was like crushing it, right? You could hear that. Let's listen. So too much effect. Let's try it. Fifty, sixty percent sounding unreal. Okay. One other thing to keep in mind is this curve here. This is gonna just determine uh, how uh, this curve determines the style of the effect that you're putting in. So we can actually uh, it gives us some information here. Uh, the curve fader modifies the processing characteristics and the sonic effect. Okay. So if we go zero to fifty, it's gonna sound. Uh, a little more bright and it's gonna sound a little more dark if we bring the curve down. Okay, so let's have a listen to that now. Okay, you hear that difference when I pulled it way down? The mix got warmer, it got a little bit darker and then we're going brighter and more sparkly up with the curve. <laughs> Okay, however, if you worked really hard on the way your mix sounds, you're probably not going to want to apply uh, any type of crazy curve to this. So sometimes I'll find myself leaning it a little bit brighter. Like I said, I, I like to tend to like things bright for that kind of pop radio sound. Uh, but you may also, there are also times I'll just leave this curve at zero. Most of the time I'll just leave it at zero and just bring a little bit of that natural effect of this plugin in like that. Okay, this is Oxford Inflator. Here's a before. Actually, that was the after. So here is the before. <laughs> All right, and I, I can tell I'm maybe driving this input a little bit too hard. This is a pretty loud mix already, so. You'll always finesse things as you go, okay? But for the sake of this little tutorial and showing you guys my favorite three mastering plugins, uh, I think that we accomplished that today. So because you made it to the end of this video, I want to give you a free gift from me to you. It's called my ultimate mixing tips and hacks guide. And it is a massive list of all of my best mixing tips. It's really cool because it's a chart. And on one side of the chart, it says, are you experiencing this? For example, uh, my vocals are not bright enough or my drums aren't punchy enough. And then on the other side of the chart, it says, do this. In that case, do this. Uh, add, you know, this type of shelf to your vocals at this frequency. Uh, add some parallel compression to your drums doing exactly this. It's a if this, then that. And it covers so many scenarios in mixing. If you just print this chart out and keep it next to you while you work, uh, you're going to just be able, to, every time you run into a problem in your mix, you're going to be able to refer to the chart, find a solution, and get your mix sounding better and better and better. People are loving this absolutely free guide. And uh, it's, it's making me so happy to know that people are enjoying it and finding it really, really helpful. These are just things that I use every single day. They help me my clients uh, love the mixes because of these tips so i wanted to put that together for you so that you could have something to refer to it is absolutely free and i'm going to put that link at the top of the description for you right now so i hope you enjoy that i hope you go download that and i can't wait to see you in the next video that's all for today my friend and we'll see you soon